So you're in, you're in Seattle right now? Right this minute, I am. I'm in Seattle, and uh, the sun is out. Oh, dude, you know what's crazy is that we're getting the exact opposite over here on the East Coast. It's fucking pouring. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Um, but, yeah, so do, are you, have you lived in Seattle the entire time, like your whole life? or? I came here to go to uh, University of Washington. Oh, nice. Sort of. I mean, I really came here just to move to the big city. And start playing music but. oh that's fucking awesome dude and you guys were like when they call you like the pot because i don't know this is a fun confessional time i don't know too much about the punk rock scene out in seattle like i know like i know some of the rooms i know the bird i know the gorilla room um and some of the some of the history there but not entirely um so i mean is that are those rooms that you guys like played in in the beginning like what's the scene look like back then those were even before the living that's wow. interesting where did you what do you know about the gorilla room and the gorilla so i was looking up uh one of my friends lives out in seattle and when he, and he's an he's an older dude but when he was younger um those are the rooms he used to go and hang out in all the time how old, was- how, how old exactly is this older dude these <laughs> <laughs> he's he's older. He's uh oh God. I want to say he's like I don't know seven. I know I don't. Wanna, I was gonna say <laughs> that's a good. It's a good question. Now, when he, I mean I meant oh, wow. This is a great. You got me there, buddy. This is a this is a good backstep pedaling. Uh, I'm saying old is in wise, not like old is mm. in like he's not using a cane or anything. Okay. He's uh you know or uh whatever. No, he's just wise. He's a very okay. good dude. Mm-hmm. He's forty-eight. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but he's you know he's, he's he was talking about those rooms and um, also the Gorilla Gardens. I think too. He's telling me about yes. So he's telling me about hanging out in that scene back in the day because he's a big punk rock guy. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, the Gorilla Room was happening. I think, uh, I don't even know, by the time I moved to Seattle, if that was still, a, I don't think it was still a place. That wow. was, and that was my, um, kind of the, my first experience, my first exposure to this, uh, this new world, you know, wow. that kind of, uh, <clears throat> just mysterious, a little bit surreal. What you know? What is this? But I was so I was not even living in Seattle. as in high school, and right. high school rock band did play there once. Oh wow! And <laughs> it was a it was a rock band. This was not any kind of punk rock wave sort of band. We were a little bit out of place there, but <laughs> not so unaccepted. Though right. That, though that, the also I think there was nobody there. So, oh, okay. <laughs> you guys, you guys were in high school and you broke into the gorilla room when no yeah. one was there. Yeah. Played a set and then left. Right. That just basically. Well, you don't get any more punk rock than that. You no. guys weren't. Even, that's pretty great. You guys weren't even supposed to. You you didn't really belong there, and you were like, "Fuck it, we're from we're we in were, high school and we're gonna go." Yes. Yeah. I guess. Uh, we were we were more punk really than anybody yeah at that time that's incredible so um yeah what would i say about it just um that that place was before <clears throat> before i moved before i even moved up here and wow. it, and i would make trips i made the trip up but just by myself mm-hmm. remember coming up like i don't know it's a handful of two or three times maybe to see whatever was happening there, it was not a thriving scene, right? Um, and it was 
I mean, technically it was a bar, I guess, and I was not supposed yeah. to be there, but I don't, they didn't seem to care. They, they just didn't give they a shit back. They were, they were not concerned about that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is kind of funny because every movie you see, like, that's dated, you know what I mean? That, like, like sets in, air, like, like any movie that they, they make today and they show people from, like, the 80s or whatever. Like, I was born in 84 or whatever. It just seems like you could do whatever you wanted when you were a kid, like, beach parties with alcohol. Like, have you seen, um, you know, like, the old Karate Kid movies or whatever? Like, just whatever they are. But, like, there's always, like, a bunch of teenagers, clearly having a, underage. Having a rave like a, on the beach. Yeah, there's, like, or, a barrel yeah. fire and no one in sight. Yeah. <laughs> like, no yeah. one gives a shit. Dude. And I'm like, is that how they actually, is that how it actually was? And most, you know, anybody it was like, yeah, no, that's exactly how it was. No one gave a shit where we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, uh. So that, that the, technically, that the so American way. Yeah, and so that was, and that's that's a bummer that it's not like that anymore. But uh, so like, was that your so the, your first band was in high school, and then what? When was the next time? Was it the living? Was the next time you were in a band? Uh, well, it's, yeah, I had this with a couple of buddies of mine from even from we might have uh, junior high. We might have this thing might have begun, but okay, through, mostly through high school. We had this band playing a lot of original music. I don't remember too many gigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Uh, and yeah, not because I have forgotten them. <laughs> right. Um, and then at the coming around the end of high school, um, with some guys, older guys that, well, I. Actually, another uh, more bar, uh, cover band, something that was intended to, you know, be able to go out and play mm -hmm. bars, whatever, with a couple of guys, also s slightly older while he's in high school. Then, but at the, it, also that uh, might have done it, I don't know, uh, three or four or five gigs. Then, um, at the end of high school, with some guys all a lot older than me who had been doing that kind of thing. Oh, wow. Playing with them for a little a while before I... Right. So you had cut your teeth as a show. drummer by the time you had actually worked your way into the, like, like the living and stuff and the other... Like, see, you, you were just drumming for years then beforehand. Yeah, I, I got my first drum set at age 12. Wow. And um, my first gig and professional... It was a, a New Year's Eve party. My parents were the, it was out at this some cool hall out mm -hmm. out there, and uh, <laughs> um, bit of band playing little dancey thing, and the drummer was ill, like super sick. Oh my god! Uh, like. Um, <laughs> Before he stopped playing, he was playing wrapped in a blanket. <clears throat> and uh, that's always a great sign. That's, yeah, it's not that. Uh, that reminds me of a Neil Diamond story. I'd also love to tell. Oh, please! But um, so that guy if, eventually he had to just stop playing. And fucking hell, this, here we go. This is my chance. Wow, my big break. And uh, that's like a that's um, like a that's like a movie sequence where like the the dude gets sick and then they're just like, hey, anybody in this room play drums? And that that's your origin story. That's pretty fucking sweet. That's it. Yeah. So I sat in. Um, that was my I mean, just the first everything. You know, I had been playing. Wow. To records, headphones. That's how I learned. Right. And um, I I don't remember what they, they were just playing cover the kind of cover tunes you would play to a thing like that. I don't remember what they right. were, but I was probably familiar enough. It's, and and you actually, and, you literally just learned from listening to other like records back then. Like that's so that's, yeah. that's yeah. incredible. I don't even think, I mean, I don't know how I, I'm not, you know, I've got a, a banjo hanging on the wall that I don't touch. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and like a keyboard with the letter stickers still on it from when I was a kid that I memorized some music on. I can't imagine being able to do that just from, listening that's incredible well you know curiously <laughs> no i also cannot imagine doing it with a banjo for example 
<laughs> yeah, it's I. Uh, it turns out it's not a neat. It's it's a. It's, it's a, just not easy. I guess it's not easy. It's a real. It's kind of funny. Anybody that I know that I talk because my it was a gift from uh, a friend, uh, and it was his dad's or whatever. And then I I kind of I like the you know the instrument or whatever, but you know I'm trying it out and like literally anybody that I tell who can actually play a guitar or anything like that, it's like why in the holy fuck would you start <laughs> with a pe- and I was like I didn't I don't know <laughs> it's just. I just thought, why not? And they were like, it's a great idea. Um, so wait, so you have a, do you want to tell the Neil Diamond story now? Or do you want me to wait until? Oh, it's, it's, no, it kind of stands alone. It just that the drummer, the drummer in a blanket thing reminded me of uh, my girlfriend at the time. Uh, Neil Diamond was, came to Seattle. Yeah. And um, I grew up, you know, as much a Neil Diamond fan as your average radio listener. You know, right, sweet, sweet Caroline and yeah. Kentucky woman. Um, but her family was um, like they were into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> I know exactly and what you mean. Her uh, her mother had since had had passed away, but um, she and her sister and her dad were real tight, and they all Neil was coming to town. Mm-hmm. They are they are on it, and wow. so. If, of course, the invitation was extended to me, and I just thought, I, well, I, Jesus, is, do I want to go to see Neil Lang with your dad? I, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but then I thought, you know, that guy is gonna have his band is gonna be badass. Yeah. So, yes, I'll fuck it. I'll go. Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, <laughs> As it turns out, <laughs> the band was good. I'm mm-hmm. not, however, they were not um, LA's finest. They were. They seemed. <laughs> they seemed like Neil's. You know, his neighborhood crew. Maybe. Right. Um. And <laughs> the drummer. I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> uh, he was playing in a um, in a sweater. You know the, you know the kind of the sweaters, and not just like a, a tidy, kind of. Is it dapper. the one that like eighty not, year olds wear that slowly just starts to come apart in the air? It not like yeah, not a dapper sort of you know a right. nice, not a cardigan kind of a right. cool. Uh, this <laughs> was say. this was like that. Oh shoot, I I know what this is. What that pattern is called? You know, like a big knot. Yeah. Yes, and yes, stuff. Like, like a, a heavy thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like a heavy sweater. Right. Oh, that, I just did. I didn't know. Yeah, that's an. He played the whole show like that. Holy shit! I just thought that was so unique, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. That's a, that is fucking weird as shit. I've never um, seen anything like that either. It's by the way. I love that you said uh, you weren't sure if you wanted to go with your girlfriend's dad to see it is it is there's that was that's such a unifying statement because like there's nothing fucking weirder than going to i've done it going to a concert with your girlfriend's parents and you're like do i really want to see her dad freak out (laughs) over over his favorite band like you know he's gonna have like a beer and a fucking hot dog and want to bond and you're like can i just fuck your daughter in a basement and get over with it like how much shit do i have to go through at this age (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to fucking just get uh, the thrust of your fucking parents. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it's brutal. I know exactly what you mean. But good choice, yeah. though, because at least you got a story out of it. You know, it worked out. It um, is a great... How was Neil Diamond, memory. though? Was he good? Yeah. <laughs> the long yeah. pause in between well, does not signify <laughs> that he was good. He, w- he, was, he was good. Um, it wasn't as remarkable as I you know after I like I said after I thought about it and thought wait this band's probably going to be they're going to kick ass so yeah and the, and with that then I started thinking this could be pretty tough could be a killer show yeah and um it wasn't that exactly it it was real good it was and if yeah as, especially if you really wanted to see him and he's my recollection of it is vague of other some of the details of his performance, but I do. He's a he's kind of a ladies' man, or he really likes to play. What I heard, 
to the ladies. And yeah. uh, I do remember him. <clears throat> Man, I, I'm pretty sure he was lying down at the very front edge of the stage. As you do. You know, communing, yeah, mm -hmm. with some fawning women down there. And, um, wow. and he had a very flat ass. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Can I yeah. tell you? You know what? That's uh. Can I tell you about a, a guy I went to see uh, that sucked? Uh, and I hope God. I was just thinking of it now. Just dawned on me. You might be friends with him. Uh, you know a lot of people, but I don't know. Can I say it? I'll say it anyway. <laughs> I went to see. Uh, I took my mom to see uh, Brian Adams. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, because he, I think, he used to. I be don't good know at, him. Oh, good. Well, let me tell you, dude. He fucking sucked. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't sing anymore, and he kept doing this thing where like. He'd sing and then like make the audience sing, and I was just oh. thinking like, motherfucker, I paid to see you do this, not. It's like a self serve yeah, concert. Like, <laughs> it was. I was like, not thirteen hundred drunks at the PNC yeah. Bank Arts Center. I don't want them singing "Summer of '69." I can do that in my car. <laughs> like fucking a man, but you know, and we we actually wound up leaving too, which was hilarious. Oh we were wow! Like, I that think bad. we're done. Like, we're I think out we're of done. here. Yeah, it was, it was, it really was a lot of like the, the and it cuts like a, you know, and you're like, are you fucking, are <laughs> like, you a, like a quiz show? Sounds like. <laughs> I'm like, is Betty White in the audience? Is this, is this the pyramid game? What the fuck's going on? So yeah, that, that blew. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's crazy that you even mentioned Neil Diamond. I was literally just talking to my manager about him earlier today. And I and I was like, hey, what's going on with Neil Tyman? And he was like, I think he's got Parkinson. I was like, okay, oh. Oh, that fucking sucks. Yeah, that would have been cool, but uh, yeah, that blows. So yeah, um, but uh, so so now I'm sorry. Now I feel like we're just bullshitting now about random stuff, and I'm I should be asking you about your. That's album. all right. That's all right it, with me. I've been talking oh, about cool. that record. So you're like, is it even out yet? I don't even know. <laughs> Does it even matter? <laughs> No, that's cool, dude. Do you have a so then? Wait, let's let's talk about a little other stuff then, because I I love knowing people. Like, do you have a concert that you went to that when like that just fucking blew you away? Because I know like I, it must be weird. Like for it's it's for comics. It's like I never go out of my way to see other comedians. Really, you know what I mean? Like if you're in the clubs, uh -huh. you're in the clubs, and that's fine. But there are a few that like I'll like pay you know whatever to actually go to a theater and see them do a show because some of them are so big was there anybody like that for you where you were like oh we, we have to see these dudes oh man uh many really nice. there was a period where i was i was going to you know big shows arena kind of shows and you know whatever, big theater stuff too, what national <laughs> you know touring bands just all the time all through high school Nice. Um, Any with your girlfriend's dad? No, I'm just kidding. And one, <laughs> just one, just one. Yeah. Just thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Jesus, yeah, I know that the, it, many of them come to mind from time to time, and now you put me on the spot, and I can't think. Oh, of that's right. Somebody just said, any. "Did you ever run into the Blasters?" No. Okay. No. Um. Right now, uh, a John Cale show at a place called the Showbox, a smallish oh. the theater, and it's it's a cool room to see a band. Really, um, that's awesome. And but um, like that would have been nineteen eighty ish, seventy nine, maybe. Right. I just fucking killer. That's awesome. His band was all younger guys, and but they're just tough. Really. Yeah, it was really cool. The eighties scene. See, any any time I'm like looking in, like I love I love eighties music and I love the the scenes and stuff and just all of it or whatever. But even like even like the sixties, seventies, eighties or whatever, it seems like there was just like everybody kind of uh, supported each other in a way that was a little different than maybe what's going on today. You know what I mean? Like it seems like the scenes really love to see new bands come in. Was yeah. that the same way in the punk rock scene where like if there was some new band coming into town into Seattle that you were like, oh, we hear these guys are fucking great. We got to see them. Or were you like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty good place to come play if you were from out of town. I think. That's awesome. Yeah. And was yeah. like, were you guys around like was Cobain around at that time? And, um, you know, I never knew Kurt. OK. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> I remember it talking to Mark Lanigan, who mentioned, and this was not long after Andy died. So Mother Love One was, had just ended, and uh, Lanigan said something about, yeah, this, um, the Nirvana, these guys, Nirvana was looking for a drummer, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. But at the time, I was not, I maybe knew of, but wasn't oh, okay. familiar with them. Um, so we never. Is that something you feel like you missed out on? Like you're like, oh, fuck, man, that would have been killer. Um, no, because I just, the way to, all came together for them with Dave. I mean, Dave's just fuck. There's could nothing yeah. better for that for that That's band true. at that at that moment. Um, He's a good guy. Yeah, and just the right guy for that band. That really Did you know him at all on the scene at all? Or I no, I still don't know him. Actually. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and somebody said uh, behind the bit said I think Screaming Trees were better than Nirvana. I don't know Screaming Trees. Oh, Bob Mold was Seattle, wasn't he? I don't know who that is either. No, he's from uh, Midwest. Oh, he's from the Midwest. Yeah. Who's Bob Mold? Uh, Husker Du. Oh, okay. Part of that, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's crazy, man. So then, so because you guys were kind of part of the grunge scene coming in, right? Like, even though, like, was there like an overlap between the punk and the grunge scene in Seattle? Well, in my experience, they were kind of one and the same. That's I, I, okay. But I guess that let's start within with the, uh, the, the definition of grunge music, right? Uh, so my my idea of what that means uh, from what the what the rest of the world hears, I don't I don't really know. Like from the from from outside Seattle, the, that that. Uh, um, you know, Mother Love Bone and Alice in Chains yeah. and Soundgarden might all be grunge bands. They're gr like. Exactly, yeah. And you were in wow. Mother... That's why I was wondering, like, because The Living was... I think The Living had a definitely different sound than Mother Love Bone, right? right. Like, and was right. that... Right, well, and I, then I, to that I would I would say that I don't... I, my idea of, of what grunge music is mm -hmm. would put Mother Love Bone just... More kind of barely really in that camp. Got gotcha. you. You know, that's what yeah. I was wondering because there is two different like there are two different sounds, and I was wondering if the Mother Love Bone wound up being like a progression of like the direction you know the scene was headed in, or was it just? It was just a funny amalgam of great people, amazing of, people of, in that band. Of all, kind of all of us, and it, yeah, obviously in particular Andy leading yes. the you know, um, and Andy was his own animal I mean, right I, you know obviously you can see the from elton john to freddie mercury and steve yeah. tyler and all of them uh, yeah and he did his and his song uh, his own band with regan and his brother malfunction mm -hmm. that was a very psychedelic thing yet still andy being that guy in, in front right of him. um but what it, uh, the uh, the grunge thing to me the the Seattle sound mm -hmm. was um, the infusion of the hard rock into the punk rock, right? And so far as that goes, that's the living was doing that. Yeah, like like I was never really uh, thought of myself as a punk rocker. Okay. And and I I didn't listen to that much to a lot of those bands. Like I was a really dug the Dead Kennedys. Black Dead Flag. Kennedys are amazing. Yeah, Black Flag. Um, but a lot of that stuff I I didn't listen so much to. Right. There's two stories that I heard about um, how Duff McKagan wound up doing like Guns and Roses, and one of them was that whoever in the band was supposed to go interview or something like that, or her go, to go to audition for them, didn't feel they were right for the band at the time. 
and then they wound up telling Duff, and then he went. That was one story I heard. Another one was that when he showed up to whatever room he was, they were kind of surprised at who he was because he was decked out like a punk rocker, and they weren't. They they just was They weren't sure what they were getting when he came in. Is that does any of that ring a bell or no? No. <laughs> Fantastic. I did, I, no. Those are two stories that I had heard, so I wasn't sure if uh, either was true. We'll go with the first one. No, he met uh, Slash and Steven Adler through an ad in, I think, in The Recycler. Oh, shit. And, and really? That's how he did it? And they all started hanging out, and we were, Duff and I were living together, and so we were all hanging right. out. So, as it was, I could only hang so much with that crew because I was not a drinker. Oh, okay. I, I just didn't have it in me. To, but pure drugs, to, right? You were just all about the, <laughs> you're like, no alcohol, but fucking yeah. meth every yeah. day. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Somebody asked if you actually smoked, though. Did you smoke weed? Um, barely. I, I gave it a go. I tried. I, I had a, a roommate uh, during that kind of around the time of the living who was uh, a dedicated weed smoker he made his own bongs and, oh wow uh, and um he was always stoned <laughs> and, and i gave it a go i tried it you know for a day didn't and take I, and i oh my god i just couldn't are you fucking kidding me i can't wow i got I you know it's crazy like this I got a guy, uh, uh, Tommy Chong's coming on tomorrow. You want to talk to him? Maybe he can help you function and work oh, through a little geez. bit. Oh, <laughs> jeez. He'll help you, man. He knows He knows all the good shit. <clears throat> I bet, yeah, yeah. That would be <clears throat> go right to the source. Right, exactly. Yeah. So when you were mentioning Dead Kennedys and like Black Flag and stuff, did you guys get to hang out with them much or, or were they just, was it, was it two different? Uh, uh, er t Tim and Warning did three shows with the Dead Kennedys in Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver. Right. And that was amazing. Just watching them, I just, I really, I dug that band. But, you know, they were all, I, I was always more drawn to bands with, you know, to some degree you had, players yeah in them, you know so and and the dead kennedys were one of those bands and in particular watching jello biafra uh manage a crowd was mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah i there's a i have a joke about that i do in my act about the dead kennedys uh not even about them but about being at a concert when I was young, when my friends and I were younger or whatever. And it's, 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 I haven't done it in so long, but it's basically just, you know, uh, it's about having no money when you're younger, just being so broke to the point where you start thinking about things differently. Uh -huh. And I used to do this joke where I'd be like, you know, my friends and I were at a dead Kennedy's concert and we were down and by the stage area. And this dude just picked up his girlfriend and started eating her out on the stage of the concert. And everyone was like freaking out. And I was like, well, with concession stand prices today, can you blame them? I mean, honestly, <laughs> fucking kidding me. And that actually oh, happened too. God. So, that was a lot of fun, but <laughs> I used to do that all the time. That's crazy that you said dead Kennedys. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite jokes back in the day. Uh, it's oh, good times. Jesus. Oh, yeah, it actually happened too. We were like, "You can just do really? that." Really great. Wow. I was like, I had no idea. There's, yeah, I see that some of that. What were we talking about? The uh, raves <laughs> on the beach and the yeah, the raves on the beach. I know. Whatever, that, you get away with whatever you please. Absolutely, yeah. man. It's like a time and a place, and then it's just suddenly fucking gone. Yeah. So what was so you went um, you went from the living to Mother Love Bone you said so was that like how long was that the transition in between that and like did you, oh, were, you were you bummed out when the the living ended and then you wound up getting the other one uh because what no, were you doing in between yeah there was a there was a whole lifetime Jesus. In between there um, so the living lasted for seven ish months right. And when that ended, it, you know, we were all like 18, 19, 20. Wow. And Holy shit. So, you know, at that time, uh, at least in my case and the rest of that band, um, 
it wasn't like uh, some big plans that we had just came, had come crashing down. It was just, it was more like one day, well, John had left the band, and uh, the three of us carried on for just a, a little bit before we were standing oh, yeah. there at rehearsal one day, the way I remember it, just kind of <laughs> all dejected, looking at each other and. Uh, just you know, yes. suddenly yeah. it was well, okay. Well, seems like this isn't fun anymore. They, they never show you those parts in the movies. Yeah, right? where you just there's, there's, uh, yeah. There's never a point where the band's like, well, I guess we're just gonna call it. Yeah. Okay. I see you. Yeah. See you later. So you did you did you bounce around to other bands or did you just try to do your own thing for a bit? Um, Duff right away went and started playing with a band called the Farts. <laughs> Which was I, uh, I did not know this. <laughs> which was a uh, sort of a Seattle institution. Oh wow! Okay, sorry. And, um, <laughs> yes, I mean I'm surprised you knew all about the Gorilla Room. You should talk to your friend about the farts. I, I absolutely will. I'll bring it up with a straighter face too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it ends with it. It was F A R T Z. So ah, well, I don't know makes... what I don't know what you're thinking. No, I, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, oh. Uh, and the old vanilla ice excuse. It's da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Duff started playing with those guys right away, and it wasn't very. I don't know how it could have been more than just a few weeks before they sort of all at once uh, were changing their name and reconfiguring and Duff Duff had been playing drums when he started playing with them. Yeah. And then he was going to go to guitar and he needed a drummer and they called me. And, oh, nice. and so I started playing with them. Sweet. Um, and that we did until, um, uh, to, Duff had, had left Tim in a warning then a little bit before he and I packed up and moved to L.A. Oh, wow. Okay. You both moved out there together? Yeah. And what was it like living with him? Um, I did, the whole experience was just so... It was a blur. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a blur, kind of intense, kind of... At what point of, did you both look at each other and go, I can't believe we're the farts? <laughs> oh well, it, 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 no! It uh, <laughs> because they, um, as I was joining, it changed. The name had changed to Ten Motor Warning, so I was never a fart. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the this is going to be the whole discussion now for the rest of <laughs> I, <laughs> anybody? John, picks up I'm on this. not a. I'm not a fart. <laughs> Please. That's all we really wanted to know. Please, <laughs> this whole I, thing. I thought somebody. Would have set you before we even sat down to talk. Set that straight. It should be right at the top of that that list that they give me. This Mrs. is what you more. Yes. It was <laughs> not a. Please fart. do not ask him if he was a fart. <laughs> That's what it should say at the top. I, the name of this episode, I was never. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. So, uh, how, so how long did you and Duff wind up living together before, like, Cause that's awesome to go out there with somebody like to, to move. I went out to LA alone, which is by the way, it was a huge mm. fucking mistake. Uh, you, I feel like you should always go with a friend that way. At least you have somebody to have a suicide pact with. Yeah. Something to commiserate with. Yeah. 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 But I went um, on my own. I was there for five or so months before I decided it wasn't my place, but it was, yeah. For Duff, he, right. he had a different kind of uh, focus for the project than I did. Maybe some people just take or, to it. Yeah, and, and it yeah, and it just wasn't it wasn't the place for me to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, so I have whatever like that spring. Yeah. It is kind of hard, like, unless you can kind of adapt to that, like, 
like the idea that that entire place was built to house really phony you know what i mean like it's all it's not there's no real structure to it you know what i mean there's no like manhattan's a grid system you know like most cities are a grid system and la is just like it's like a giant theme park everybody seems to be working at something all the time and no one's honest yeah and it just goes yeah and it just goes forever outward yeah, somebody told me when I was out there, they were like, even when you're, uh, you know, shopping for groceries at Ralph's, you're auditioning, and it's like, and I was just like, don't put that kind of fucking pressure on me. <laughs> like, yeah, are you out of your mind? But it's true. It's absolutely true, and it's yes. awful. <laughs> it, yeah, it that that aspect of that place is doesn't. I'm not suited for that, you know. And it's not that there's there's a lot of great stuff, a lot of great bands. That, yes, it's, you know, it's not that it isn't there. But there is a lot of that other stuff. And, yeah, uh, and I admire people that can go through. I mean, that's that's awesome that they can handle it. It's just not suited for everybody. Yeah, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that we're better than most people. Good, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, and I'm- also, <laughs> I am not a fart. Please, <laughs> right, right, right. and also, just to clarify. Yeah. We're just gonna run it as a scroll. Can we run it as a <laughs> scroll we, on the bottom? A ticker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Oh God, I love it. Um, mm. So that's that's fucking awesome. So what brought about like the re like the release of this album though? Like what? Who was? Because it like it's it's crazy. It's good. And like if I had never, not that it matters what I say, but I liked it. Uh, <laughs> what what um what's crazy is that if I had never like known about you guys or whatever beforehand, I would have just thought this was a new like somebody came out with a new new album. Like that's it. So it's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not like it. Yeah. There we go. It's on the bottom now. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> this is how we do things here. <laughs> Fantastic. Service with a smile. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fantastic. I, so. What? What were we? What did oh, you... I was asking you just about like how this, how the new, like how, oh, how it came to be, how this happened. Yeah, yes. because like who, who decide, who found them, who decided to put it together. Like it's, it's incredible. Um, it's eight or ten ish, eight years ago at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, an old, a, a fan of the band had some encounter with a couple of kids from Portland who were or had already starting a kind of a boutique indie label. And right. somehow out of that meeting came this idea of, um, of making a record out of that, those old living tapes. Wow. Which those of us who were familiar with them had always loved, you know, I've, I've always just thought they were, it was really great stuff, but it had yeah. never, it had not been in my mind that, you know, I had not made it my mission to, therefore, a record should be made. It's just, oh, that was a really cool thing <laughs> we did once. Um, it's always somebody else that, like, comes up with, like, the great marketing. A weird, great. Like, I'll do the same thing where I'm like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I really enjoy this thing. And somebody else around me is like, uh, you know, you can make money off of this, That's right? A, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, I never thought my camera yeah. was focus for some reason. There we go. That better? Yeah, there I am. Now I'm in focus. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so uh, it's uh, that was the first of um, three uh, attempts at making a record out of this stuff that didn't come to fruition, and then wow. um, uh, a couple of years ago, I guess, uh, we're not to lunch with Stone, and among other things. Mm-hmm. You know, told my tale of woe and struggle over this record that just that should that needed to be but didn't seem to want to be. Uh, eventually, he and Regan got involved, and wow, that's where we are. That's cool. And Fine. you guys still hang out and everything? Like you're still all close and stuff? Yeah, we don't see each other that often, but mm-hmm. occasionally. You know, it's always good to see him. That's cool. I feel like, but with the pandemic and stuff. Like that's like the people that I didn't see that often or that I used to, I, I've seen more now than I'd care to say, like, <laughs> like we're, you know, where it's like, yeah. Oh, like you went from not like having like a lunch buddy, like every three months or something like that or whatever. And then 
now they're like, hey, you have House Party and 40 other uh, <laughs> video apps that you want to get together on? And it's like, first you're like, yeah. And now the novelty of it is worn off. Uh, and like, if, I, if I fucking see your face. Yeah, now, yes. Yeah. yeah. You find yourself remembering why <laughs> right. you had been on that yeah. sort of three month schedule. That's why yeah. I started doing this. So that way I could talk to people I don't know. <laughs> Like anything, anything Keep it fresh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's that's cool though that you guys. I mean, like even if you get together, like like you said, like sparingly, it's still pretty fucking cool that you're tight. Yeah, I um, Stone's a great guy, and uh, cool. He is he is one of a of a handful of characters, mostly musicians. Mm -hmm. In my life, that I, you know, one way or another, I owe. It'd be hilarious if all of a sudden you just pulled him up on Facetime. And you're like, <laughs> just, Actually, <laughs> here he is here, and here's my iPad with the, like, who the hell knew? <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> I'm like so geared into your record collection and CDs back uh -oh. there, like I'm dying to rummage through. Look at that! Holy shit, dude! That Love is it. awesome. Let's see, the boxes are full of motorcycle parts. Oh, are they really? Oh, wow. Fuck. <laughs> um, you still ride? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, more than ever. Lately. Wow. I, am I having a miss, like, uh, firing on what Seattle is? Isn't, isn't it pouring in Seattle like 90% uh, of the time? Well, <clears throat> the weather here is not as bad as its reputation. Because um, all I've been watching is Sleepless in Seattle on a loop. So that's the only impression I yeah, have. Yeah. It's like very sad. Yeah. Though so there's, we definitely get, I, I would say, more than our share of those kind of days for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I do fantasize about living down somewhere on the Baja, possibly oh. before too long. You and so, me both. Um, <laughs> Do you like it down there? Do you spend time down there? I've been, yeah. It's yeah. nice. Really yeah. nice. Like, never come back nice. <laughs> That's, yeah. Nice place to be homeless, That's I guess. Kinda, it's kind of how I feel. You know? Yeah. I tend to ride. I'm, I mean, I'm tending to ride down there for too long. I don't know. It depends on the, if it'll be this year or cool. how the COVID thing. I was going to ask, like, how, up, how you have know? you been doing during the, Like, how's Seattle been handling all that? Pretty well, you know, people here were pretty quick to adopt the mask thing without the, making Problem. a lot of noise about it, you know, and uh, it's just become pretty normal. Um, so, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. And, and personally, you know, I spent a lot of time at home uh, anyway, so. That's good. Yeah, I feel like there wasn't a giant change for people who, uh, like, I could get, like, I'm, I'm an extrovert and I like to be out and I like to be traveling and stuff. But as soon as they were like, uh, "Hey, you have to stay home," I was like, "Oh Christ, thank God, a reason!" Like, <laughs> like, oh, that's fucking great. I love telling people no. And they're like, yeah. "Oh, do you want to?" Nope. Mm -hmm. I gotta stay home. Yeah, yeah, this is a real bummer. Because I think telling them that your mom that you had to clean your room or something, it wasn't yeah. you couldn't get away with that anymore. Exactly. I'm getting the vaccine this Saturday, but I've decided not to tell anybody that I'm getting it so that I can still, <laughs> I like, okay, I'll yeah. feel safe. Yeah. I'd love to see you, but stay away yep. from me. I know. I'm like, Oh, this damn vaccine. I can't get it. I don't know what's going on. Just the people I don't want to fucking see anymore. I don't know what it is. It's like three years later. I'm like, oh, I'm, still, I'm still, I'm on, they tell me I'm yeah. on a waiting list. Yeah. Somebody stuck me with a needle, but it was the wrong one. I was in the hospital and fuck, this is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my Instagram is filled with pictures of me like eating out <laughs> steak restaurants and <laughs> oh shit, that's crazy, dude. So are you? So are do? Is there? Um, it's releasing April sixteenth, right? Yes. But yeah, so I guess you guys. It, it kind of sucks that even this kind of ruined. Like you guys can't have like a giant release thing or whatever. But are you going to try to do something collect like virtually, collectively, like the label, the Pearl Jam, and everybody getting together? You know, um, I don't know. That's not the kind of thing that I, I just wait for somebody to tell me what I'm doing, well, listen, what, what time to log on. 
when they tell you, you tell me, because I want to okay. log on too. I don't want to be left out of this. They're gonna be. I'm just gonna be that weird dude on the Zoom call in the corner, like this. Fuck. The Zoom bomb. Yeah, who's the guy who won't cut his hair? <laughs> Why is he still here? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Quietly eating in the corner. Yeah. Is he in a steak house? Where is that? <laughs> You're like, don't worry, he got the vaccine. He's just not telling anybody. It's fine. That's cool, um, dude. So, yeah, I don't... Uh, that's funny. I had not even thought about there being some kind of... Uh, I'm going to set it up. That's what I'm going to do. do. Please do. I, I will. It, it could be the reason that I have not heard about it is just because no one has taken the initiative. Wow. Oh, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk to your uh, – Michelle's very nice, by the way, your publicist, I think. Is that who I was speaking with? Um, uh, she's, yeah, she's very, very yeah nice. I think so. You know, yeah, I only get uh, emails and text messages from her. Where, How do you know like, you're the rest of your career is where not Where she's being, telling me, she's yeah, telling me what to, where to go with. How do you know your do? entire career right now is not being run by some kind of AI <laughs> named Michelle? Hey, it's <laughs> all the same to me. I, <laughs> it could be. It That's could so be. great. <laughs> I love it. Oh man. Well, it's cool, dude. Well, I don't, I, it's, uh, they told me I could only keep you until six o'clock your time and it's, uh, oh, a minute right about there. Yeah, yeah. Right about there. I don't know what else you have to do, but I'd keep talking to you, but, uh, man, I would, I don't want to get yelled at. I, I do have another call. Yeah. Here it's, well, it's, listen, so. uh, seriously, thank you for reaching out and thanks for, thanks for coming on. And, uh, it was a blast talking to you, man. I love, uh, come on anytime. But, hey man, I would, I really, I would love to. Uh, Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. It's anytime, dude. You. Really yeah, enjoyed it. It was really. a pleasure, man. It was very nice meeting you and talking to you. And, uh, I'm going to set up that, uh, that release party for you. Do. Do. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> It's going to be me, you, and a Zoom call, and 15 cats that I've just got. Everybody's here. It's going to be great. Uh, all right, dude. Well, thanks a lot, and take care, and it's good seeing you. Likewise. Have a good night, man. You too. Take care. Bye. Dystopia Tonight.